six oh five here. We can go ahead and sort of yeah. get, get started. Anybody else gonna say hello and give us a wave or do they stay <laughs> blanked out? So hi Ralph, Chun Men and Eric. Nice of you to join us tonight. Um, tonight, you know, we've got our special guest, Jonathan Reeves, uh, from UK, uh, presenting for us tonight. So it's he's only going to present for 45 minutes an hour. Or so it's, it's past his bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> past his bedtime. Thanks, man. It's, a, it's 11 o'clock <laughs> over there for him. So it's nice of him to to join us. I've known him for I don't know five six years now. I don't know how long it's been. But yeah, we met at some of the Vector's conferences years ago, didn't we? Yeah. So you know, times. He's a very personable guy and you know, really knows his stuff with Vectorworks. And now he's you know doing a lot of real time rendering with Twin Motion and Inkscape. We were talking about there. Uh, some of you were getting on. Um, so you know he's a wealth of knowledge and he's actually Flansburg's reseller for for Twin Motion. So uh, he does. He knows how to use the project product and uh, can, can sell it to you. So it's a, he's, he's a good person to get to know. And if you've probably seen some of his YouTube videos for Vectorworks and um, real-time rendering. So he's putting a lot of information out there uh, for us all to begin to understand how, how great some of these tools are. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Pleasure. So. Shall I, shall I get started? Do you think that with everybody or should I get started now? Yeah, I think we can get you going. If you... People might drift in, you never know. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll add, let people honestly drift in. Excellent. Well, greetings to everyone else I haven't said hello to, um, but I'll start to share my screen then. Is that okay? I'll go for it. And you, I think you're recording anyway, aren't you? Yeah, we're going to go ahead and record. Fine. Okay. So tell you what, before I do that sharing, I'll just switch over to this screen. And let's go back to Zoom. Great, okay. Everybody see that okay? Give me a thumbs up if you like. Yeah, that's good. Yeah? Excellent, okay. Well, I'll just sort of carry on from where, where Brian sort of left off with a little brief overview, if that's okay. Um, I'm not gonna to talk too much. It's not a massive presentation, but I really wanna get in and do some live demoing for you. Um, it'll be the key really. So Twin Motion, revolutionize your rendering. Um, I'm working on a new book and this is po probably my working title for the new book that's coming out soon. It's quite exciting. Um, so I'm Jonathan Reeves, I'm a qualified architect. Um, a number of years experience and let's go into my full screen good okay so we're gonna we're gonna try and sort of just show you a bit more about the benefits of 3d and real-time rendering particularly focusing on twin motion today um, and you know talk about some of the opportunities within the industry but really i'm just going to demonstrate through a real life example what the benefits are for you just a tiny bit about me not much um, i'm a practicing architect as brian said uh, over 20 years experience, I've had my own firm on the go for 20 years since 2000, so that's good, exciting. And um, I'm also a UK reseller for Vectorworks and a reseller for Epic, uh, for Twinmotion, so that's great. I sell a lot of Vectorworks in the UK. I teach Vectorworks as well, um, and also selling a lot of Twinmotion now, all over the world, actually, so I can help you guys with that if needed. Um, and I think I'm allowed to say I'm an author because I did write a book and I'm writing another one now. So we're kind of getting there with that too. I've got three websites. You're more than welcome to have a look at these. My architecture one, my Vectorworks one, and my rendering one, Twin Motion rendering one. I might show you that. But that's the key one that you'd be interested in from tonight. So real hyphen time hyphen rendering. <clears throat> and here I am in the UK. Literally, I say I put a pin in the middle and this is where you find me. Um, I've actually lived all over. I've lived in London, I've lived in Bristol, Devon, Sheffield, and now I've kind of <laughs> come together in the middle. So it's a good location. I'm about two hours from almost anywhere in the country. It's amazing, really. I can get any, anywhere. We're only a small country, as you know, and it's a great little place to travel from, although these days it's all remote. Um, so I've been using Vectorworks and 3D for 20 years. I started with Minicad 4. Um, I'm not sure what Brian started with. I bet he was maybe similar. Um, when, when did you start, Brian? Uh, I think it was eight. 
Mini okay. Kelly, I, oh, look at that, I can beat Brian, there we go. Um, and a program called Strata Vision, um, it was my first sort of introduction to rendering. And this image here, you know, this took me about three weeks of modeling when I was a student. And I think I left it to render 640 by 480. I remember the, the pixel size, yeah? So something you would see not even on your phone these days. Um, and it took 72 hours to render in my little bedroom with my four megabyte computer Mac at the time. Um, but I was, I was still into it and I really enjoyed the 3D process, but goodness, it was painful. Now, everything has moved on dramatically, hardware, software, <laughs> and hopefully skills as well. So, um, you know, you'll see how amazing Twin Motion is and what it can do in, in well, real time, of course. I've worked with um, a lot of practices. I do a lot of teaching and training for Vectorworks users all over the world now, which is one bright spot for me after COVID. Instead of being sort of just in the UK, I've been training Australia this morning and you guys today. Um, so it's amazing. So if anyone wants some training online, I can definitely do that for you. No problem on Vectorworks or Twin Motion. Um, I've got an amazing new office. Uh, it's just a, not the whole building, of course. Um, but it's, uh, this is where I'm sort of located on the canal in Loughborough, which is lovely. Um, and this is one of my sort of training rooms here, which hasn't seen much use for the last year, but we will, we will get there. And I will be able to have people come over at some point. It's pretty nice. Um, so the last year it's been a bit empty, so it's a bit regretful, but it's starting to kind of get back to normal now. Here's my book briefly, Innovative Vectorworks BIM. Uh, it's a bit old now, I suppose, but still got some quite useful hints and tips in there. Um, and as I say, the other thing that some of you will know me from is my YouTube channel. Look at that, that was 2.75. I'm now over 8,200. So if you haven't joined up already, please do. Lots of videos on there for you for free, lots of free training as well. Um, and then finally, I just want to mention again, um, I've got the website, the real-time rendering website, so any more information you need on Twin Motion after today, drop me a line or go and have a look at the website and uh, get in touch. Um, yeah, fine. Not here to sell you the software, but you can certainly give me a shout if needed. Brilliant. OK, so let's hop over to Vectorworks for a minute. Who recognises Vectorworks? I think everybody does. Um, I just want to show you a brilliant um, sort of evolution of a, a quick project. So this project here, um, some of you may have seen this. It's sort of um, an earth sheltered eco home. Okay, and here is the, the drawings, basically the sheet drawing. So now it's quite an interesting design. And the, the idea of this was that the project, um, the land here, this plot of land had been refused planning a number of times. It kind of feels a bit like an infill site, but the council, the local planning regarded it as open countryside, believe it or not. So we, we were trying to argue that it wasn't really open countryside and actually it was an infill site. And by looking at a, a sort of development which um, started out being an earth sheltered eco home, I think you can clearly see my Vectorworks sort of proposal is quite clear with an earth shelter and sort of sinking it into the ground. That was where we got the, the local authorities interested. So instead of just refusing it outright, they were going to refuse it outright, but we got them to engage. And actually, they came round, and interestingly enough, then they started to say things like, well, maybe you don't need to hide it. Maybe it could have two stories. Maybe you don't need to bury it in the ground. So really, really interesting process. I never thought that would happen. So from this design, <laughs> this is now where we've ended up, um, which is now the scheme that's in for planning. And I think you can see it's an evolution of the other scheme. Um, it really is, it's actually the sort of same footprint, but we kind of do have this additional sort of floor, which the client was pleased about because they really did want a bigger dwelling. Uh, and actually, I really like the new design. I think it's got a nice presence at the front, uh, streetscape wise. And I think constructionally, it didn't need to be buried, which is obviously going to be costly. So yeah, quite pleased really. So interesting evolution, that doesn't normally happen with planning. It normally gets smaller and less, less visible rather than the other way around, I'd say. Have you ever had that, Brian? It's sort of <laughs> a planner tells you to make it bigger and more visible. Interesting. Yeah, that's always the case. <laughs> okay, so you, I just thought I'd show you the back to its model before I kind of skip into Twin Motion. So this is just using OpenGL rendering, uh, really nice, really fast, just a bit of shadow nothing kind of flash, you know, day-to-day -day stuff. 
Um, but I, I do still love using Vectorworks for all my renders. And I, I think, you know, you can get some great renderings out of Vectorworks on the 3D side with a little bit of effort. And they don't take any time to render at all. I don't really tend to use the final quality very often because I know that if I want that next level, you know, I'll jump to uh, twin motion instead. But I really like these kind of views, these graphic -y views that Vectorworks produces. And for me, these really complement um, the twin motion side. So I love doing these trademark, well, they're not really trademark, but these exploded views, I love these kind of things. So hopefully, would everybody say that gives them a reasonably good impression of the project, even after a very few moments. And that's the power of 3D, like to show people that wouldn't see the building um, and so on. Okay, so it just gives you a bit of an idea of the project before we hop into Twin Motion. The way I structure my model, if you're interested, is um, simply using uh, layers. I don't really get into the stories. I just find them a bit overcomplicated for what I need. So you'll see that if I strip this back, I can basically just turn on and off the um, various layers here if needed, which is really cool. And that's nice as well. So you basically just got three design layers stacked up without stories, anything too complex. So what I tend to do because of that approach is when I go to um, start to export my model, I tend to do it a layer at a time. Okay, so what I would tend to do is start with the site and I'd go file. Uh, and up until recently, I've been using the Cinema 4D export to get to Twinmotion because that's a reliable export format that I find really works well. Um, there is a new one, the Data Smith one. I can see my it's not in my plugins folder for some reason, but and I've been experimenting with that. And there's some quite exciting developments coming, uh, which Brian and I are not allowed to talk to, not talk about too much, Brian. Um, but you know, keep an eye on that as a future um, format to export, because I think that'll be really good soon. But for now, you've got a choice of the two. So I do export the model in chunks. And the reason for that is then what I find is if I need to. OK, I can actually turn, I can basically re-export to just the ground floor or just the site. You rarely find that everything's changing all in one go. So you normally can hone down the changes maybe to, I don't know, the ground floor. So if you do need to re-export the model, you've only got to redo that bit and you don't have to redo the first floor or the, the context. OK, so that makes sense, I hope, for everybody. Break your model down a bit more and don't do just one massive export. It might be quicker, but ultimately it will save you more time to do it in chunks, particularly on the bits that you know are likely to change. OK, I guess you probably do similar, Brian, when you do your exporting to Twinmotion. If not, it's a good step. Yeah, I do everything layer by layer. So. Layer by layer. Yeah, brilliant. Excellent. OK, great. OK, I, so... I, I've been using the FBX format until the data smith came out. Oh, have you? Have you? Not the Cinema 4D? No, because I was talking with What's his name from Twin Motion? I said FBX is, it's what it's um, the yeah. game being based on you know Microsoft, and it, that was their reliable recommendation. Okay, fair enough. Well, there we go. I know OBJ. I've experimented that years ago as well, and I have tried FBX. I just find Cinema 4D super reliable. To be fair, great. Okay, so let's hop into Twin Motion. Right. Um, I won't show you how the, the model was imported, other than you can see that here it is in its layers, the flat site the ground floor, the first floor, the roof, the gates, and that kind of thing. Um, when you first load the twin motion software in, basically you'll see, so I'm just moving my zoom bar, you'll see the organization of the model. And it is nice because look, I can now turn on and off the various elements if I want to. You see, you can strip the model away. And that's just very convenient to be able to turn off the entire layer, I find. Okay, so that's the other benefit on the other side of doing it layer by layer, plus the benefit of exporting. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, let's kind of get into this a little bit more. So the first thing um, you do once you've imported is basically start to work a few views and basically add some materials, I would say. So the real big benefit of the real-time rendering software is, is exactly what you're seeing now on screen. 
you know, you already get a very nice high quality preview. And imagine doing this in software that isn't a real time rendering software. You know what it's like if you've done 3D before. You're basically setting a view out, hitting render, waiting half an hour and finding it's wrong, yeah? So you have to redo that process 10 or 20 times and it's super painful. Um, with this method, it's much more manageable. You basically got the organizer here. Think of this as object information, okay? Down here, you can pop out a statistics panel um, and this would be interesting to keep an eye on while I'm zooming as well as presenting um, in that you can kind of see my frame rate. I do have the option to adjust level of quality. Um, so if I was to drop this down, if my computer isn't quite man enough, I'm on a bit, my big PC at the moment, if I was on the Mac, I'd probably drop down to one of, you know, one of these two. But you should see the frame rate go up quite dramatically. Here I am, I'm back in the green now. And you really don't notice that much lacking, lacking of quality at medium or high level. Um, so yeah, it's a good little tip that. Don't go for low, if you go for medium, yeah, it will definitely look a bit more clunky, but you're gonna get a lot of frames. So that's fine when you're modeling and you're doing stuff, and then you can crank up the quality later. Okay, so that's, that's the reason Twinmotion is also good. It runs on different hardware. Okay. One of the lovely aspects of Twinmotion, as well as uh, a nice, simple interface that me and Brian were talking about and everybody really just picks up is it's kind of straightforward. You know, you've got these side panels um, and all you need to do here uh, is basically click into either materials or the library. So it's, it's going to do a couple of materials perhaps first. So let's kind of navigate over here. And all I'd want to do is open up my materials palette. Um, there's a bit of searching around. I basically can just drag and drop some different materials on there. And then I can sort of scale those up in real time as you can see. So there's a really nice library of pre-made materials. I mean, it's never enough. Architects are pretty fussy. We, we like lots of different things. How do you find the libraries, Brian? They're, they're decent, but there's always a bit more you need, isn't there? Yeah, you can add textures and create them yourself. And now they've got the um, Quixel. Well, that's, that's true. So yeah, the, in the latest version, so as well as the standard twin motion ones, I think there's about 700 materials there. You've also got the um, integration of these things called Quixel mega scans. And this gives you both assets, also materials and surfaces. Uh, so this really does expand the library quite dramatically. Um, so there's some really, really fantastic, not that I want in the doors, but let's just see how that would look. Oh yeah, okay, so you've got to, what you've got to do is just click and download it if that's what you would like. And then once you've downloaded it, you'll see the little icon. Um, and then once it's downloaded, it will be permanently part of your library. And then we can drag and drop it onto the drawing. Hopefully. There we go. I really don't want to have those wooden doors, so let's undo that. Okay, great. So. Um, the geometry comes in, uh, when, when you do import, there are a few options. You must uh, not tell it to collapse by material. You really want to do it to keep hierarchy. And that means that you can then, let's say I did want to change the stone. If there's a different stone in here, maybe let's have a look. Okay, well, here's a good one. Let's use the search. So type in the word stone, and then it will kind of filter out all the different stones for you. A lot of the Quixel ones, the only downside of those I find is they're very, what I call gamey. Yeah, they're kind of a bit game industry as opposed to all very architectural, a bit worn and battered and so on. Um, so you've got to look a bit hard for some of them, but you will find things that you can use. Okay, as well as the um, assets, basically you have 3D assets that you can load in as well, go back here. So let's start with the twin motion native objects. Um, so I'll start with a couple of sort of things that I've added in here. Let's just get rid of that for a moment. Okay, so I go to home, go to living room, tables, and there we can see a selection of 
stuff that you can just drag and drop in. I think that was the one I had before. So it's very, very user friendly. You can move things around, okay? You can rotate them um, and you can even scale them if you would like to. So if you want to make it a bit longer or that doesn't make sense, but make it a bit bigger for certain things. One thing I really like is um, the, the thing called the widget here. If you click on this yellow widget, you'll notice that it snaps, not only to different surfaces, but you know I could easily snap it to this landing up here. Now it's up on that landing. I can move it around on that plane. So it's very clever the way it just sort of three-dimensionally snaps to wherever you want it to go. Wish that have had that sometimes. Pretty cool. Okay. Um, there's a really nice asset sort of library of things like plants and stuff. You can see I've been playing around with a few of those as well. But the main thing is you know, you've got this library to hand, so use it. But if you do want to import more, you can. Um, because what you can actually, there we go, there's a Boston plan there. It's very appropriate for tonight. Okay, it's getting a bit busy now. And that is one that is one tip I would give all of you. It's very tempting to over busy the first few images you do with Twin Motion because it's such good fun. Um, I think. I don't know whether you found that, Brian, but you've got to kind of pair it back a bit sometimes. It's not easy to get carried away, isn't it? Yeah, there's so much to pull in. Quite a lot going on. Yeah, so I think, I'll tell you what, I'll keep those bossing ferns and I'll get rid of these, uh, these things there. Okay, great. Um, so let's move on a bit. So that's adding assets. One of the things I really love most about the Twin Motion software is the ability to add naturalistic stuff. Okay, so to do that, we can go to a couple of tools. Uh, I'll demonstrate this one, the vegetation paint. It's pretty awesome. Okay, and what you do there is you can go to your grass, drag down, in fact, let's go for something a bit wilder, a number of different types of thing, and then you can select them. Then you get your brush. And then basically, you can literally paint. I mean, honestly, the first time I saw this, I fell off my chair. It was like, what? Trying to do this in any other software, back to works, anything, would be just crazy. Um, so it's just amazing, really, that you can do this kind of thing in real time now. What I really love is you can then adjust the density of each element. It's really lovely. And you can even go back in and, I don't know, drag some additional flowers in. <clears throat> Isn't that fun? Let me let me crank up the quality a bit more now. Let's go for high. So look, look at that in high quality. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, so very, very, very quickly, I, I've never felt like this with any other software, apart from say Photoshop, okay, and clearly Photoshop's one, one image at a time, is the ability to direct a movie and make your own little kind of scene super rapidly. Um, there's some really lovely trees as well, libraries of trees. And again, you can even sort of bring forests of trees in. If you do want to uh, be a bit more specific, you can, you can hold the shift key down and you can drag off a copy. And using that, you can be quite precise. So you can kind of like, you know, do an array of trees or something like that. And actually all of these objects could be placed precisely using the transformation palette. Um, so every, every single object has an X, Y and a Z location. Not that I really work like that, to be honest, but you could be super precise. I prefer just to get up above it um, and go to plan view. Um, and this is a good way to do that, to go to this sort of plan view here. And then I'm just going to scroll down here a bit. It looks a bit more diagrammatic in plan view, which is fair enough. But you can see really precisely now, I can position these trees exactly exactly where I want them. So that's definitely a good tip. Use, use these views to place things and then go back to your perspective view. Okay, so that's looking quite nice. Um, okay, so that's definitely a huge benefit is the the vegetation system and just things like, I don't know, 
quality of the rocks and stuff like that, which is pretty nice. You know, if you click and sort of look at the quality of those assets, really, really lovely actually. Um, you'll notice that I'm navigating around um, and I'm using my keyboard. It's the WASDA key. So to be fair, it does help to be a bit of a gamer. Um, I can move quite forward quite fast and there's some different options up on this little panel here, which I'll just show for a second. So this is called the navigation panel um, and it basically shows you everything you need to do. Here's the WASDA keys and here's the speed. So if I click one, I go nice and slow. If I go two, I go fast. If I go three, I go really fast. Yeah. So if I go four, I go like hyper speed. Um, it's pretty amazing. So you, well, I, I can't control it in four, it's just too fast. The best thing to do is, is anchor yourself and fit back to the model. I generally run it on speed two or two, one or two, I'd say. And I'm moving around. Okay, so let's kind of set up a couple of views. Um, it's kind of a fun view. It's not a real view, but it looks nice with the, the trees and things here. So what I can do is go off to my uh, media tab. Okay, and this is where we set our views and we go to images. Now you can see I've got a bunch of pre-saved views already, but let's set a couple of new ones up and then we'll review the old ones. So I click create image. That saves the image for me. And the really nice thing with Twinmotion is that every single image has its own settings. Okay, now I really wish other software had this, like in Vectorworks, you'll do the lighting and that lighting is really for all the images, unless you very carefully manage it with classes. But in Twinmotion, I can simply go to location. I can change the location to anywhere. Here I am in the UK, but if I wanted to Drop myself. Where's Boston, guys? Just about, uh, about over here somewhere. <laughs> I have been to Boston, so it's, I don't know. Yeah, rough. A bit further up, Brian? Yeah, you, I think you're about. Not right? too bad. Not too bad. We're in Boston. Um, I can change the lighting. So I can go through from daytime through that gorgeous golden hour. You know, it always looks nice if you do the, the golden hour in the morning or sometimes the the opposite, the golden hour in the evening, that looks lovely. Change the month and the times of the year as well. So you can actually do, you know, seriously physically accurate shadow studies here. And furthermore, you can just cheat as well, just by rotating the north angle. Um, so, you know, you, you can show the client what the sun really looks like at eight o'clock in the morning, or you can cheat and just make a really nice picture, which might be a bit artificial. Uh, just to get the shadows looking great on the building there. I love that. So that's the real benefit. Every single image has unique sets of lighting. You can see I've got the ambient lighting here, dark and down. I can do all sorts of stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of sliders. So this is probably where um, Twinmotion gets a bit more advanced in a way, the lighting and stuff, I'd say. Yeah, I can do things like harden up the shadows as well just by adjusting this slider here. It becomes a bit of an optimum. Okay, so we'll rewind a bit. Um, let's do a little review of some of the images. Um, this was my, my starting one. And again, at any time, I can just sort of pan down and kind of get around to set up a new image that I like the look of. I'm getting there nice and close. Um, if I want to go down to ground level, I just click M, and that takes me down to pedestrian mode. So now I can't fly. I can literally, I'm stuck at, you know, whatever a human height is, so 1.6, 1.8 meters. That's kind of nice, because that gives me very naturalistic images. Um, we'll review a few more of these images here. That is the beauty. It honestly is. And if I say to myself, that tree is getting in the way for that image, I can literally turn it off and I can update. So here it is there. It's kind of in the way for the other image. I just turn it off if I don't want it in there. Or I could just move it slightly. So it's a really nice little thing to be able to do per image. Um, Twin Motion is also brilliant for internal views. Okay, so here we are inside the building. 
Let's go nice and slow. So whenever you're inside, you want to kind of walk around. So, you know, imagine showing your clients their new design and being able to kind of share, a bit like we're doing now, share the screen with them, take them into their building. And if I click this button at any moment, I go full screen. So when I am screen sharing, I can literally do full screen and then I can slide through, you know, so I can talk to them and say that here we are coming out the morning sun, going to get the morning sun coming through, but you know, it's not going to be too bright or, you know, whatever. I can really discuss some of the design aspects of, of why I made an overhang or put some solar shading on. So I think that's amazing. I love that. And it's really nice how you can sort of just tune the lighting just coming into the building. So yeah, love the internal views. I think the speed of them is phenomenal. And I really like the full screen presenter mode that you can just pop in and pop out of at any time. I think that's a huge benefit. I mean, you can carry on working in that as well. Once you come out, you just move things around and, you know, pop back in at any time. Okay, so I've got a bunch of images here. Um, each image as well, you'll notice that on some of them, I've got like uh, the lighting inside turned off on this one. But on this one, I've turned it on. So that's the other big benefit, as, as we talked about before, so I'm trying to move my zoom bar, is you can set up all your lighting so that you can manage it per image. Um, so let me just go back to the, so this one where the lighting is actually off. Let's add a bit more lighting in. Let's spin round. So I think I need a bit more lighting. So I'll go back to my lights. And all I'm going to do is just drag and drop these lights into the model. They do come in pretty bright. So let's uh, let's dim them down. You'll see that you can actually type lumen values in here. So let's just go for one lumen, pretty low. I can give it a little bit of color as well, the beam angle. Let's go, let's go a bit brighter, let's go two. And then when I'm ready, I can hold shift down and I can literally just copy this thing across onto the wall number of times. So here are all my spotlights and I can manage, oops, I can manage all of them together. So you've got things like, uh, that, that's a bit bright of course, let's make that a bit less, kind of linear lights if you like. So if you've got like nice recessed lighting fittings and stuff like that, that can look cool. I think the tip is make it subtle. Um, and of course, you've got things like OmniLight. So OmniLight is cast light in all directions. Um, and you've got the option with all of these things to have shadows on or off. Because sometimes the shadows actually make it look worse. So you've really got to kind of judge it on what you're trying to achieve. I think lighting in any 3D software is the fiddliest thing. Would you agree with that, Brian? It's always the hardest thing to get right, oh, especially. Okay. Especially without real time rendering, where you yeah, like yeah, wait and render and wait. The texturing's okay, the propping's okay, the lighting is always something that will come with experience. And uh, yeah, you know, just the more you more you play around, the more experience you'll get, really. So yeah, it's cool. It's easy to go a bit over brighter, I think, sometimes. But I do, I do generally like the lights, and there's lots of them. You know, you've got these really nice sort of uh, IES lights. I won't really notice that until I dim the lights down, maybe. Um, so to do that, actually, I just need to re rewind to the image I'm on. So I'm constantly moving my zoom bar. What I do is then adjust the, well, I can do a number of things. I could adjust the time of day. So it kind of gets dark inside. And then what I could probably do now is go and turn my external lights on. You see in the garden some lighting coming on. And then I'm free to maybe add a few more lights into the model. I mean, it's honestly, it's just such good fun. You can basically enjoy yourself again with 3D, whereas rendering before became very time consuming and painful. And if you don't like it, you can just uh, you know, have to wait half an hour to re-render. Okay, so 
you can see it's very easy to set up an awful lot of images, you know, what, where you might have given the client one or two images, you can now give them as many as you really want to. Um, so the other thing that I love and talked about the night shots is um, the weather system. So just touch on that for a minute. So we'll just go, let's go back to let daytime, night time, see how easy that is. Let the moon comes out at a certain time as well. It's nice. Let's go to weather. Um, so here we are in uh, perfect California skies. We can go a bit more UK, definitely a little bit more UK. Make it rain. Um, and then what's really nice is that when it rains, you get these nice, okay, it does look a bit waterlogged, the grass, but certainly that patio looks pretty nice. Pretty awesome. There's some extra enhancements actually, if you really want to, uh, that you can drag in from some of the decals, decals, yeah. Um, I was playing with this the other day, it's quite sweet. You can even drag in like extra puddles and things like that where you can kind of make, make it even more rainy and wet. The, the idea of these things is that these are decals, uh, things like graffiti and stuff, just to make the model look a bit more authentic. What do you think though? I think that looks pretty stunning. Okay, brilliant. So the weather system is really nice. Actually, we'll just show you one more thing on that. Let's come out of the weather system. So if I, do, if I just want to test it out without doing an image, I literally, I'm just trying to battle with the zoom bar. I basically can adjust the weather for the overall model. Not this isn't for a specific image, just to try something out. And one thing I quite like to do, it's quite fun, is show it snowing as well. You have a bit of snow in the winter, Brian, generally, don't you, in Boston? Yeah, we're good. So I think, you know, showing the clients a nighttime snow shots, I mean, how would you do that in any other software? You know, it's gorgeous, isn't it? They'll absolutely love it. So, you know, especially when it gets to near Christmas time. <laughs> so I think it's just so flexible. Excellent. Giving it on the time. Right, okay, so let's just review. We've got all our images here. The final killer feature, there's two really, is animation. Now, you know, if you've ever done animation uh, before, you'll know how time consuming it is to set up, okay? It's hard to set up, it's hard to visualize and it takes even longer to render. So these animations here, these are just playing in real time, previewing in real time. Um, and to set them up is super easy. Let's just do a new one from scratch. So yeah, let's go, I think we'll go and do an internal one because that's nice. Okay, so let's say we want to be here walking forward. All I need to do is click create video. Move forward a bit. So let's go back, let's go slow. Always helps to go slow. Turn around a little bit there. Another frame. That's the minimum I need is two keyframes. And then I can animate between them. And Twin Motion does all the nice sort of soft animation for you. Um, a really nice other little tip here is to adjust the lighting different times of day. So here I am seven in the morning. Uh, let's go to the uh, end time. Just gonna make that time, well, maybe not quite that late in the day. We'll give it a go. Okay, so as I play through the animation, now you'll see the light changing outside and maybe inside, depending on what you're trying to achieve. You can slow the animation down simply by adding more time. So if you add 30 seconds, suddenly it'll be really, really slow. Okay, and this is just a preview, of course. When you render the final thing, you'll get, you know, whatever level of quality you specify, right up to 8K. I normally do 4K, to be honest. Um, and the renders will, well, they will render out in, here we go then. I haven't done an image today, but my last rendering, sometimes the images take a few seconds, the animations take, I don't know, a couple of minutes probably, on a decent bit of hardware. So they're very, very quick to do. By the time you've had lunch, you could have, you know, three or four nice animations and 10 images, easy. So the videos are great. 
love the videos. Um, I love the fact you can sort of, you know, give the client a walk up. Um, let's just carry on. You can make the doors open, actually. I haven't done that on this one yet. Just going to get inside. The final killer couple of features are presentation mode. OK, so let's set one up together. Um, I'll go to presenter and I'm going to create a presentation. So what I do is I click plus. And basically, I can load in images that I would like to use. So I, I kind of the way I describe this is PowerPoint on steroids, really. It's basically you select the images, you change the order, and you can also pop some movies in as well. That'll do for now. I uh, don't really like that one, so we'll remove that one and we'll go back to that one instead. It's a lot nicer. So yeah, see what I mean? You build a presentation and then what you do, if you're ready, is click this button here. Now this takes you into presenter mode and I've actually got the still images. So if I was presenting the job to you and trying to sell you the project or give you an update on it, um, this is fantastic as a way of presenting. And the fact that I can take over any moment and free ride and sort of go and talk about something very specific with you is brilliant. But I can then revert back to my kind of pre-prepared sort of story images. So it has the benefit of a PowerPoint where it's all pre-prepared with all of the interactivity that you get with real-time rendering. I mean, I, I just can't think of a better way to present things really, other than virtual reality and getting a headset on, which of course you can actually do. You can click the VR button. If you had a headset, you could plug in. So I think VR, in my view, is an emerging technology. It's been emerging for about 20 years since I was at university, but I think it's getting there now. I'm sure some of you have used it. I think Brian has had some experience with that as well. What do you think of the presenter mode? Pretty, pretty neat, eh? Have you yeah. used it, Brian, to present to clients? Yes, we have. And now, now the cloud is a really great, a new addition to it. Oh yeah, but definitely. So what what you can what you can now do when you come to do the exports, not only can you just simply load up all the images. I'm not actually going to export them all, but I could I could export them all in one go, and it will happily punch through them. Plus, I could do all the videos. Um, I can also export my presenter cloud. And what you can do with this is you can export it locally or to the cloud. Um, and this is a very nice thing because what you can do is share that link. I think I've got one that I just quickly, so I won't actually do the export, but it wouldn't take long, I promise you. Um, if I go up to my Safari. Have I got one here? Which one? Which tab was that on? I think it was under one of these tabs. Yeah, here we go. I've got my Twin Motion Cloud. Can you still see that, Brian? Everyone? Yep. Um, I, this is a project I did with um, a US architect actually, because I do quite a lot of freelance work. I don't think you'll mind me showing you briefly. Um, you basically, I uploaded it to the cloud for him. Um, you've got the link that you can then share to a client. And the good thing with the Twin Motion Cloud is um, it means that the client doesn't need a copy of Twin Motion and they don't need a supercomputer to run it. Okay, it will take a few few moments to load. Um, so maybe we'll come back in a second when it's loaded. Um, but it's a really novel thing, and I think the quality of it will improve. Um, and I'm hoping soon they'll have support for things like iPads as well. Um, so it's a really nice little gadget. We'll come back to that in a second. So, you know, kind of beginning to get, look at the time and think it's time for me to start to wind up for a few questions for you. But basically, for me, having done 3D for over 20 years, um, I found that I was just getting too busy to basically spend three days or three weeks doing a visualization. I, you know, I didn't have the time anymore. So I kind of stopped doing it for a few years. And, and then when Twin Motion came along, I just really got back into it because it became easy, became fast. I'm not being funny. It's the most fun part of the job. That's what I love doing as well as 
creating the buildings in that direction and designing nice nice buildings hopefully it was all about communicating that and um, I just think it's a wonderful tool to share with your clients uh, just can't think of any other way there are a few other real-time rendering softwares we talked about Enscape is good uh, Lumion is good they all have their pros and cons but twin motion is cost effective it's easy to use very fast and for me, it's the one that's cross-platform. So I, I run it on my Mac, but I'm also running it on my PC when I need to. So it's great. So quick look at our cloud. Oh, here we go. So um, yeah, this is the, it's a project in the desert outside LA. Um, so it's a very different environment from mine. It's a nice little scheme. I actually did the modeling um, for this one for him as well. But you can see it's brilliant. It's, this is on the cloud. So this is on the website now. So this is, you know, the client can look at this. And you can still kind of slide through the times of the day, kind of visualize the project in its context, um, and free ride around as well. So you can get inside and review images as well. So it's just an amazing little tool. And I think Epic Games are, you know, they're a good company. They're developing things at a rapid rate. Um, so in my view, any any sort of things that maybe you don't like about twin motion yet or criticisms you might have, I would bear with it. I, I really think it will keep improving dramatically. Um, would you agree, Brian, it, it has improved so much over the last year or two even now, hasn't it? Yeah, like every upgrade. Every upgrade is pretty major. Yeah, the price point's low, still good value. And I think those people who got it, three years ago, still still got a copy. And, um, you know, to be honest, though, you know, you can buy five seats for, for not that much. So, you know, if you need a sort of, instead of a network license, which they used to do, you just buy standalones now. Would anyone like to ask any questions? I'll, I'll stop and wind up. I have a question. Uh, hey, Bernie. Oh, talk about louder, please, so I can't hear you. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes, just about. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, hardware requirements and what do you use and you mentioned that? Yeah, the hardware requirements are uh, as good as it can be. The, the, the key thing is the graphics card. Really doesn't care about the processor. Look, here's my monitoring situation. Nothing going on. Yeah, processor doesn't really care. I mean, a bit of RAM will help. I've got 32. I used to have 16. It was fine. And look, my GPU is actually doing nothing right now. But as soon as I start to uh, kind of crank it, you'll, you'll hear my fans going. Um, so yeah, you want to get, the best thing is the graphics card. So on the Mac platform, um, you really want a four gig minimum or an eight gig graphics card. Personally on my Mac, I've got a Vega 64 external graphics card on a MacBook Pro. That's what I run and it runs really well now. So most of the time I'm working on the Mac, but I thought to be safe today, just to really blow you guys away with the frame rate, I've got a very good graphics card on this PC. So I do get slightly smoother frames. Um, and when I'm zooming, particularly that uses a lot of video. So Bernie, in essence, graphics card. It's all about the graphics card. It's all it really cares about. Okay. Yeah, we, we've got an external GPU and that makes all of yeah. it. It runs, it runs fine in most cases on my MacBook Pro, which- Yeah. Oh, without, and that's without the GPU, is it? Yeah, it depends upon the complexity of the model. And yeah, I think so. I mean, you can still work in um, different levels of quality, as we talked about. And the really only downside of that is it just doesn't look as great on the screen. OK, um, but when you're moving around, you get good frame rate. And then when you render out, it, it renders at the same level of quality anyway. It always renders at the ultra quality or beyond ultra. Saying that, it's very nice to work in ultra level of quality. You know, you just see, you can really tune up the image and make it look absolutely fantastic. That's the beauty, it's reflections and lighting. That's where ultra comes in. So yeah, you know, don't scrimp on the graphics cards. If you're a Mac user, fingers crossed for next week, um, I think we're all waiting with bated breath for the new M1X or M2 MacBook Pros, see what comes along there with a good graphics capability, I hope. But any other questions?
Okay. When you're exporting, are you using the hierarchy or are you exporting by material? Or? Um, I import, I always like to keep hierarchy because I like the ability to be able to turn off and on individual objects and maybe swap out different materials. Yeah. Yeah. I you, found can see, you can see on this option that I've got some timber cladding, but I could also turn it off and show a white rendered option as well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice that. So, you know, it's pretty straightforward to f show a few different options if needed. That's quite nice to be honest. <laughs> um, and again, you can use the save view uh, potentially to recall that. So that's a, that's a good thing to remember that you can have a look. Here's a Here's a save view of the white render option. Here's a view with the timber cladding. Can you see? So yeah, keep the hierarchy is my advice. I found with just larger models, exporting by texture seems to reduce the number of elements. Oh, okay. You just have to have the model textured right the first time. Yeah. Vector works, but it, it creates fewer pieces and I guess, you know, each you find um, it helps on the performance. Yeah, that, that, that would the be the reason for doing it, wouldn't hard, it? Yeah, hard, okay. Hard projects. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Back to a snowy scene. Yeah, so I think it's great software. I would really encourage you to get it. Um, have, if you visit my website, actually, there is um, we've got a new trial page. So um, by all means, feel free to have a quick look. Where are we? On this page, we've added a new trials page. I'll just move my zoom bar once again there. Um, you don't have to visit this to get a trial, but it's quite nice if you do, then we send you out a little freebie, a few, few things, um, and we can keep in touch. But there's all sorts of nice examples on here, um, on the gallery page, some really nice examples. I've, I've taken quite a bit of time to sort of go through <laughs> YouTube and source what I think are my favorite sort of videos. So there's a nice inspiration in here. So yeah, some of these are simply gorgeous. I'll have to get one of yours on there, Brian, soon. If you, let's send me a nice one. There's some really, really cool, cool stuff in here. So yeah, if you've got some nice work, please send it our way and we'll feature it on the gallery. That's a nice little section. Um, and then of course, we've got the, uh, the store, if you want to have a look in a bit more detail. It's in the UK, but you know, generally, I also do um, sell a twin motion training uh, guide that I created, which is pretty good value. But I do twin motion training online, like I've been doing here anyway. So it just gives you a bit of a flavor of what we do. Excellent. Any other questions from anyone else who's not spoken, Eric or Chin Min? What do you think? Very impressive. Have you, used, have you used it, Brian? Bernie, sorry? I have not. No. It's very tempting, I think. So apart from Brian, who else has actually had a go with Twin Motion? I've, I've played with it a bit. I think it uh, it's uh, very rewarding. It takes a... Uh, uh, it's a little practice. <laughs> when I started, I didn't have the right equipment, but now, now I do. So yeah, it, it. Does, it does really help to have a good, good bit of kit. Um, that really, really can help. As you can see, it's a much more pleasurable experience. Uh, early days on the Mac, it was a little bit sluggish. It's definitely performance is getting better as well. Um, you, there's a couple of things that you can do, which are kind of fun. But for more urban projects, and I've done this before, you know, you can easily add people. Um, now, architects hate adding people generally because they always look a bit clunky, and I get that. But clients often do like to see people in the images, and, you know, they, they can bring it to life. The beauty is, though, you can easily, you know, just turn them on and off anyway. So you can do an image or an animation with them on, and then do a set without them. So they're much more architectural. Um, and there's other things that you can do in here as well, like once you've got the image kind of set up, um, you can basically do quite a few different sort of, where is it, visual effects and filters. 
Um, so you, you have sort of different kind of gradients as well, a bit like Instagram really, isn't it? So there's an awful lot of those. Generally, people will find the one they like most, the old fashioned one, all that, it's cool. It's quite fun. Uh, you know, I played with them. You'll find a favorite or two, but generally you'll end up not using them. Um, and then the other one is the clay render. Sometimes that's fun and you can kind of do you know, the white card model. So if you're not ready to commit to materiality, you can just show the white card model. Quite, quite trendy as well. That can look nice. So lots and lots of different effects. Um, and then this phasing we didn't even talk about. Anyway. Okay, guys. What I've done is white carded the, the characters to the model. Standard. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a really flexible bit of software. It's a bit like being a movie director, I think. And that's what I, I think you should regard yourself as. It's super fun. You know, when you set the views up, you kind of really frame the map and you can just work really rapidly. Uh, I've never really found anything like it. I say I do like Enscape in some ways. I like some of the images in Enscape. The quality of the interiors is good, but I do not find it as fast and flexible as Twinmotion. Um, I find it I find it more awkward to use. I like the interface of Twinmotion, and it's getting better and better. So, yeah, I'm a big fan. <laughs> I am too. Yeah, brilliant. Well. If, it, if that's what time are we on now, Brian? It's sort of, there's an hour for you. Yeah, thank you for your time tonight. It's approaching midnight for you there. And yeah. Past midnight. So. My pleasure, my you. pleasure. Yeah, you um, jump. If you wouldn't mind share the recording with me, if that was all right. Yeah, sure. I'll, when I, once I see that. get a hold of it. Yeah. Okay, Shelley can say goodbye. So I'll stop sharing for a minute now and give you all a I've got a bit blurry, I can see for some reason. My webcam's maybe blurry, but that's okay. You're okay. Good. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, like, um, bye bye. Nice to meet you hey, all. Thank, thanks so much. That was great. Thank you, Jonathan. Excellent. Thanks. Nice to meet you, Benny. So, Brian, I'll sign off. I'll, I'll leave you guys to carry on with your meeting. All right. Appreciate it. Great. Thank, Take you. Care. Thank you so much, Jonathan. See you next time at the Vectorwitz conference. Hopefully, yeah. if that happens. Maybe we'll set up something again next year for you. Next yeah, month. definitely. All right, well, let me know if I can help anybody and be, I'll be really glad to hear from you if you want to reach out. All right. Thank Appreciate you. it, John. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. All right, so that was a, a treat to have Jonathan. He knows his stuff. So, so yeah, you know, I get to know him, I, know, I think, yeah, about five or six years ago and so it's super, super personable guy. So, uh, so then, you know, like three or four years ago, I uh, was looking for a rendering solution and actually came across this twin motion at the, the ArchiCAD user group at the VSA. They were, they were presenting it one night. So I went to that meeting and saw it and I had some renderings to do at the office the next week or two. and. I said, you know, this is what we have to start using. And tried the trial for 30 days, got the renderings done and was hooked ever since. So, you know, just quick, uh, you know, the fidelity of the models from Vectorworks is pretty easy to keep updating and refreshing the models. Like you said, I usually do it layer by layer and that way you don't have to keep re-exporting the whole model, but you can just export what you what you need um, I can share a few things that we've done I thought I was going to get some of the other people from the office on here to share but they sent me some stuff that they've been doing let me see where did I put that folder Switch over to share my share my screen. Now, before I forget, 
Um, let me post the credits thing if it hasn't been posted yet. Um, So there, I just posted the credits if anybody wants to get those. All right. So, yeah. so this is like the first rendering that I I did. This is for Malden uh, City Hall. So you know, we've looked at various lighting studies and material studies. And the great thing, you know, that Jonathan was showing is that you can sort of do it real time. So um, you can just drag and drop materials and say, you know, what if this, what would this look like with marble? What would this look like with wood? What was this like light wood or dark wood? So that's sort of the nice thing. It's just like interactive uh, in the meetings. You can just go through some design options with the client and, and then show them different options while they get some feedback. Um, let, me, let me stop sharing here and do this again. We're looking at it from different points of views. You know, the client didn't like these hanging lights, which was a design option. So you know, they, they could see you know, what they were getting, but there was like a wood lined council chamber and glass for the city. Here's the view from the, from the lobby. You can, that's John. Um, so we're able to, you know, you know, present different views, different options. Here's like a view of the lobby and the lighting, the roof deck. Then we the animation here. Then we created a animation for them to use for some fundraising. You should look at it from the street. Characters are animated. The trees are animated. For some reason, there's wind in the lobby, and that shrub is shaking. Forgot to turn the wind off on that object. So you can create paths for characters to walk down, walk along. Um, it's really, really easy to sort of set up animations. Cars drive by. People walk by, people stand there talking, change their appearance. Imported, you know, this whole model from Vectorworks and just placed people sitting in the chairs and behind the council chamber desk there. So it was all modeled in Vectorworks and just animated in in motion as design evolved is kept updating here's, here's like the second floor view
Brian. Yeah. Um, is there a way to have uh, a live updatable link between the um, Vectorworks and the uh, Twin Motion, or do you need to do a fresh import every time? It's in the pipeline. It's uh, right now. It's sort of I've I've been exporting the FBX in the SP three of Vectorworks twenty twenty one SP three or SP four, whatever the latest uh, release was. They've uh, has created a new file format called Data Smith, which directly links into a Twin Motion, and they're they're working towards a real live. Um, direct link that uh, if you move it in vector works you'll see it update in the model but right now you, you do sort of run an export whenever you make the changes so it's they're work they're working towards that it's in the in the pipeline thank you so like all these textures and stuff we're pretty much directly from the Vectorworks model. I tuned them up a little bit in you know, twin motion and added some artwork to the walls. The idea is, you know, there's like a chair rail or a picture rail that, you know, that they can have sort of student art or whatever and art in the, on the walls. So and it was fun and it was pretty easy, pretty easy to do. So set up a few points and let the renderings uh, do their thing. Um, so here's some other images of current projects we're working on. This school in Ashland. Um, I have this working with is currently working on this school in Nosset. But then, you know, it's all coming directly from our Vectorworks model. And just a little bit of adding the entourage and tuning up the lights. You know, we've, what we do is, you know, pretty much, like I was telling Jonathan, you know, we pretty much export things by texture since we're doing larger projects everything that sort of has a carpet texture has is just one object so it sort of reduces the file size to some degree um you know with, with lighting give it a, a glow texture and adjust that a little bit in twin motion but you know to get the light put some trees in the background and it really it has a quick interface to, to be able to you know interact with so we're, we're really happy with at least this is like one of our young kids doing this these animations and just add some graphics on the walls or whatever to bring it all bring it all together um, Again, this is what school we can look at you know different materials this is the, you know, the fiber the cement cladding here it is with slate so we can quickly switch up materials and you know, do, do do design studies sort of on the on the fly um, and we've done a bunch of animation. This is a theater project in Hawaii. If you look at the, the Vectorworks site for the direct link to Celebri, this this is the, the project that's featured there. We used, we used our 
project, which is a unrealized project in Honolulu that um, got scrapped. We're building something else on the site now. They bought another site. We were through end of DD before they pulled the plug on it. Really captures the light nicely in the shadows. It's a black box theater. Custom theater. Just the way the light comes in the glass here, it's really the spark is there. It's really fun to see something come out of this crowd of these these renderings. And they're, and they're just setting up a few key points to to move along and, and really takes our modeling to the to the next level. On the tech grid. This is another project we you know, imported the did a panoramic view of this context and put that in as our background. This is a science center, Northfield Mount Hermon. It's under construction now. So the great thing is, yeah, we can find all the furniture online and really bring it all together and clients really see what they're getting, model all the MEP lighting stuff, chilled beams.
So the nice thing is we're able to you know, really keep these models up to date as the design you know, progresses. You know, start the rendering process and schematic design is you know, to get the concept and get buy-in from the clients. But you know, as it goes on to construction documents, you can see the the frit on the, the glass there for the, the bird proof glass. You can keep adding a level of level of material and level of detail to the to the model. You know, the nice thing is the client can you know, sort of scroll back and forth and stop and focus on different different aspects as they look at it. And like Jonathan was showing, you know, the, the export to cloud, they can actually get in it and move around on it like just like they were in twin motion and move from space to space just through the browser window. Um, another science line. So just like a simple pan from end to end of the building. Basically just take two frames, one at one end and one at the other, and let it run. A nice aerial drone pan over a building. You can walk along the path. Like Jonathan said, this this is this program is so much fun to play with. It's like designing the buildings, what we do, but really being able to sell it with something like this. And the most fun I've had using being an architect is using this program. It's you know, really satisfying to bring a vision to life like this. Even those clunky work clunky vector works tables and chairs. All right. This model. Yeah, we get the you know the perforation on the, the risers. Brian? Yeah. The um the context, the topography and the uh, flora, is that uh, from geo referencing? The ex external panorama. Like the hills in the background, hills and the trees and the grasses. And all that. Well, the trees and the grasses are, you know, straight out of twin motion. We've been able to you know, customize. It comes with 
sort of a panorama background in, in twin motion it's pretty easy to put in one of their plugins but you know we've been able to sort of take i'm not sure exactly how we've done it we've been able to you know, sort of take a drone footage and create you know a 360 panorama and stitch it all together to create create that 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 accurate more accurate panorama of the on the so it's, all, it's all fictional it's not site specific i i know on the the previous gilder center of the science building that that was pretty site specific i don't know about about this one but we are able to sort of stitch together a series of photos to create to create that that background which is so it's sort of that yeah. you, know, the, you know twin motion does come with sort of countryside city backgrounds seaside backgrounds but you can custom customize you know, I think, you know it's a little bit of photoshop and learning how to stitch things together to be able to create that but you know these trees and stuff are just twin motion trees and the nice thing is you know they the leaves change with the seasons they you know they drop off in the winter or they blow in the breeze if you have the breeze with them and if you have a flag and a flagpole it'll flap in the wind so it, characters move cars drive by so it's creates a real sense of reality you know some people say it's a little too much it's a little too cartoonish it, the clients get their buy-in and they can sell it to their to their donors birds fly by this is the this is the one particular donor davis to show him how his name is going to be used I'm going to have to uh, unplug in a minute or two, but thank you. This was very, very interesting. Very good. Oh, you're welcome, Benny. Thanks for joining us. I think that's, that's really about all that I have to, to show anyway. So thank you. Yeah, I sort of went through a few assets that I have. Unless anybody has any other questions or wants to see any anything else. Yeah, it's good. Thank the you, Brian. The sky will change with the, you know, the weather, it'll be more cloudy, it'll be turn twilight and dusk. So it's If you're looking for rendering software, I think this is it's good value. It's, I think it's like I don't know, 400, 500 bucks. And it's a pretty easy interface. Everything's drag and drop. You want to change the texture on something, just drop another texture on it. change it real time right in front of the client. Sometimes it makes it too easy. <clears throat> so right. thank you and see you next time. All right. I guess yeah this is it for the summer. So I guess we'll reconvene in September and I assume we may go back to sort of a 
in person, or at least hybrid. I'm, I'm sure we'll continue broadcasting via Zoom, but I guess we'll probably be meeting back to the BSA in the fall. I haven't heard anything definitely, but I think with the way things have been progressing these last. I hope. I hope the BSA can upgrade their internet connection. That used to be a bit of a problem <laughs> yeah. for us in the past. Yeah. So. Well, thank you. Back thank in person you. and have some more beer and pizza. That's that's the that's the most important part. <laughs> yeah. I think that brings everybody out the beer and pizza. Yeah. But I know people not having to sit in traffic for couple hours to get into town for the meetings has been an advantage too. Now this this Zoom thing is uh, has had a lot of benefits. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually I've got one meeting running on my laptop while I'm sitting here talking to you. It's <laughs> yeah the uh, it's, two places at once man. it's it's wild. So yeah from our very early days to, to where we're we are now where we're going. I created this custom floor texture and vector works and it worked pretty well. Looks like what we've got there. All right, everybody. Thank Thanks. you and everyone Thanks. have a good summer. Thanks a lot, Brian. This was great. Thank you all. And everybody got the link for the, the credit there if they need to sign up for it. This, these are really sweet. You, you didn't do these all by yourself, did you? You, you had a little bit of help, right? <laughs> we have one person that does some more of the work, but yeah, we got three or four people that know how to how to use it. So you know, it's not that not that hard. As you, you said, you've been trying it out some. So what, what yeah. do you? Think? It's it's pretty pretty straightforward drag and drop very well i simple. can i can tell from the look of what you were showing that a lot of thought went into you know the the soccer game and the and the bird over the over the the building i mean you guys you guys uh, spent some time thinking it all through i think you didn't you weren't just randomly dropping stuff yeah <laughs> so yeah like like jonathan said you're sort of the kind of cinematographer on top of it, you're sort of looking for keyframes and yeah you know, what's passing by the one thing is you know when you export the movie you never quite know what you're going to get you can't really keyframe the characters so sometimes somebody will walk right in, right in front of you <laughs> just like, like real life <laughs> so you got to go back and try it again but the exports are really quick you know for a, a still image it's a minute or you know, two or three minute clip, it's five minutes. So what, you know, what I'll usually do is, you know, set up a series of shots, then can export those and stitch them together and, you know, iMovie or whatever to you know, make the final presentation. So it's a fun, fun program to use. And like, there is a, a, I think a 30 day trial to get your feet wet and test it out. It, you know, it's got direct links with Revit and SketchUp and Rhino. It's we're working towards it with, with Vectorworks, which I think will be coming soon. So something, whenever you have to step up your rendering, it's, it's a pretty easy way to do it. I think uh, the next next stop is virtual reality. I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this does you know link right. You can run a VR right right through a VR headset and sort of move around the model. I did that with that Hawaii project. And we presented that as, as a VR. You can really get in it and move around, look around. Well, I was lucky enough to score a. Um, uh, NVIDIA 2080 before the prices went crazy. And uh, I, I pity the poor 
as Mr. T used to say. <laughs> I pity the poor, the poor bum that has to buy a car now. But um, it's uh, it's the market's crazy. Yes. Good luck finding chips now. All right, everyone. Enjoyed the year. So, anybody has any thoughts for September? It'll come quicker than I can imagine. See you then, guys. All right. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you all.